I experienced um, the being told I, I I shouldn't be around other people, being told that I was dangerous to be around. Um, I was, people were afraid of me to the point where I was afraid of myself. Um, I was physically, I was, I was forced to sleep outside in the snow. I was, um, like I said, isolated for up to 12 hours a day. Um, if I, if someone wanted, if someone spoke to me directly, if I wasn't wearing duct tape on my mouth, um, I had to just stare at them and not respond because she also had systems of people that would re report back to her if I broke any of these rules. Um, and her whole thing, which is deeply, darkly ironic, is that everything is stems from shame and how, how horrible shame is. And that all of the reason, like all of mental illness, all um ticks so like OCDs everything stems from shame um which is just horrifying because she is the greatest uh perpetuator of shame back in September I made the Ruby Frank files also known as eight passengers which was a specific vlogging channel of a mother and her kids and her husband documenting their daily lives on the internet. In this video, I went into the background of Jody Hildebrandt and Ruby Frankie and the husband and the curriculum that they're teaching through the Mormon church, which specifically emphasizes a spe restrictive parenting methods in which they, in which they teach their children certain ways to behave, act, but ultimately hinder their ability to grow up and be normal, sociable adults. Back in September, Ruby Frankie and her best friend Jody Hildebrandt were both arrested at Jody's home in which one of Ruby Frankie's kids escaped out of a window, ran to the neighbor's house, and asked for food, water, and help. This boy has been... <laughs> This kid has obviously been, he's been, he's obviously covered in wounds. And the first thing the neighbor realized is that this person had, you know, bruises all over them. They had their hands tied. They had duct tape to their mouth. The state immediately got involved and found out that the child was extremely malnourished and was being starved. According to the neighbors around, this is, it had been an ongoing thing for several years, and the neighbors had done numerous CPS reports trying to get law enforcement involved to take a look, a peek at what's been going on in the home. Apparently, there was multiple investigations, and they came away with absolutely nothing, it took the kid escaping and asking for help in order to finally be seen, heard, and put in a safer environment. It's a truly tragic story, but it doesn't stop there, okay? Because it gets a whole lot worse. Now, because of how big this was publicity-wise, Jody Hildebrandt and Ruby Frankie immediately within several weeks um, were already being charged for a large amount of different felonies for obvious reasons. Special thanks to the brand new sponsor of the channel today, Rocket Money. Rocket Money's mission is to meaningfully improve the financial health of millions of people and empower their members to achieve all of their financial goals by canceling unwanted subscriptions, lowering bills, setting up budgets, monitoring your credit, and improving your finances all in one place. Rocket Money is an all-in-one personal finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. I've been using it myself this last month and it helped me save by setting up my unwanted subscriptions on just how much money that I'm spending per month on things that I don't actually need. It allows me to lower my bills, set up specific budget spending, allows me to monitor my credit score. This app will help you reduce monthly costs and expenses in your daily life. It's one of the best apps for money management and right now in this economy is the time to start saving money. If you press that first link in the description box of this video, you can download Rocket Money today, unlock more features with premium by going to rocketmoney.com slash Repsion, support the channel, click the link, and start saving money today. So the photo that you're looking at right now is Ruby Frank in court facing her felony charges. Um, I love this photo simply because it's what she deserves, but just not that. There was a surprising twist that happened in court, and this is where things just took a really big dark turn, and one that at the end of the day I think speaks more volumes about her if it is true, but at the end of the day this is Ruby Frankie, somebody who neglected and who malnourished and who locked her own 
you know, family in a room as punishment, which I don't know about you, but that's just something you don't do. This is the same mother who punished her oldest son by taking away his mattress for six months for playing a prank. This sleeping on a beanbag. I've been sleeping on a beanbag since October. <laughs> and they gave my room back like two weeks ago. Oh, I'll give yes. you the reason why I lost my bedroom. I think so. I think this is the reason. At least this is the reason that's been in my head. It's pretty funny, but now that I look back, I mean, it's pretty depressing. No, we never told our viewers. That I woke Russell up at 2 in the morning and told him that we're going to Disneyland and he has to pack. <laughs> <laughs> and he got up and made his bed all neatly and then packed all his clothes in a suitcase. And then he walked out the door and I'm like, Russell, and he's like, what? And he's all happy. Has his sunglasses on. Chad showed that he was not able to manage himself sharing a bedroom with Russell. So when we moved, um... The bigger room in the basement was automatically his, and I didn't have a room, but we like put one on hold for me. So a lot of you are like, hey, that's not fair because Chad got the bigger, the lesser bedroom, and Russell got the, the bigger bedroom. bedroom. <laughs> Russell got the big bedroom, and Chad got the, the smaller bedroom, smaller. and Russell's bigger bedroom also had a bathroom. But what you guys didn't know was <laughs> Chad didn't get any room. Mm -hmm. he, didn't, he didn't get anything. He was sleeping on the floor in the family room. And he just got the bedroom back and it's because he's shown up consistently without bullying the kids. And now I have no friends. You can play with friends. No, like I don't have friends. I don't have friends either. I literally like told my friends I'm not hanging out with them anymore. Because, because they're really they say some pretty people. messed up stuff. I've noticed that you've been hiding from me and you are feeling a lot of embarrassment and shame. I don't know. You tell me what you're feeling. Mad. Mad? Because I really won't get anything this summer. I won't be able to go anywhere. No, I don't have any friends. This is the same mother who sent her son to one of those wilderness camps where they are known to absolutely terrorize and neglect and, and malnourish um, teens who are quote-unquote in a bad, you know, bad behavior environment, even though he's not at all. This is the same mother who made a video specifically emphasizing, hey, I'm not gonna give my kid a lunch for his school. And the teachers, you know, brought this up as a concern, like your kid needs to eat food. The kid needs malnutrition. Uh, from Eve's teacher. And she said that Eve did not pack a lunch today. And can I bring a lunch over to the school? This happens quite often when you're having raising children. I know that her teacher is uncomfortable with her being hungry and not having a lunch and it would ease her discomfort if I came to the school with a lunch. Um, but I, I responded and just said Eve is responsible for making her lunches in the morning and she actually told me she did pack a lunch. So the natural outcome is she's just going to need to be hungry and hopefully Hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch. The kid is a kid. The kid is growing. The kid is in, you know, development stages of becoming a teenager or adolescent. And here you are making a video bragging about not feeding your kid lunch and that the kid at age seven or eight years old has to make their own lunch. I could go on. There's a lot of different more examples of this. I'm just really trying to set in here this person who Ruby Frankie is and how that there should not be an ounce of sympathy, empathy, or anything towards this woman and she deserves whatever comes towards her. But in the surprising legal case, she made a argument, if you could call it that I don't really think it qualifies but during her charges she made an appeal about one of her six children and that several of her kids were actually hurting and abusing her um, as the adult and that one of her six children specifically is involved in the aspect of SA towards other kids in the family and towards neighbors around the neighborhood. Um, and this is just crazy to me. This is where it took kind of a dark turn because at the end of the day, we don't know what is or what isn't true. But she claims that her own kid essayed and did things to neighbors and her own kids in the family. And she also brought up the fact that her three-year-old at the time started looking at this, this word, um, I can't say it on YouTube, at three years old. 
which to me, I process as that, if that's even true, which I, I don't even know how a three-year-old can even understand what they're seeing at that point, um, much less access it. How did they access this? Does that just go to show how much of a terrible parent that you are? If that is true, that you allowed a three-year-old to just sit and have full, like, how does that happen, right? I think it speaks volumes to her as a parent, more so than her trying to dig and attack her own children as a means of defense. Ruby Frank also says that her kid came forward to her about the SA that the kid committed on the neighbors and her own kid. And naturally, there was no evidence presented in the court of these specific claims. They are purely speculative and alleged. However, one interesting thing that did happen during the hearing in court is that an attorney came forward in the courtroom and was representing one of the mothers of the neighborhood kids who allegedly had been essayed by Ruby Frankie's kid. I don't really know how to process all of this. People asked me in my last video why I didn't focus on the husband, mainly because the husband has been a participant in the vlogs and the videos for the last however long, 10 years on YouTube, right? My husband has denied any participation, participate, par participation in the things that Ruby Frank and Jody Hildebrandt were doing to the kids. But I just find that hard to believe that as the father, you wouldn't know what your own kids are doing and what your own wife is doing to them, especially if they're missing and they're not even in your own home. They're at somebody else's home for a long duration. At this very moment, YouTube did delete Ruby Frankie's YouTube channel and banned her from the platform, which I have to say on YouTube's part, shame on you. Like, Genuinely, authentically, you guys are a disgrace with certain things because people on the platform have been reporting the Eight Passengers YouTube channel and, and highlighting the blatant abuse that was being displayed in content live for thousands of people to see. There's like This has been an ongoing thing for years, and, the, and a large part of the Ruby Franks audience were people angry and upset and hate watching them to specifically emphasize and point out these problems with the videos and nothing ever happened from it you know youtube it, it pilots itself on like children's privacy and children's um we protect children from this and if you make kids videos comments there's the comment sections disabled and all the, they have all these they they, they pat, pat themselves up as like we protect the kids but when there's actual stuff happening where a parent is admitting that they're starving their kids and not making them food for lunch. What are you doing? Why don't you listen to the community that YouTube is and your users when they're pointing out blatant TOS violations that could have gotten the channel suspended or struck years prior before that? It's a really crazy situation, and I'm going to be talking about SS Sniper Wolf in my next video here, and that's a whole other issue I have to talk about. Now, Ruby Frank's attorney, um, this October, I think it was October 4th or 6th, we were supposed to get an update of um, the charges and because she was facing 15 years in prison, and her attorney filed for a extension for discovery, and apparently... That's not going to happen until like I think January, February of 2024. Um, but I believe, and this is and this is purely speculative. I have no proof of this yet. But I believe that the argument is going to be made that through her attorney that this is a religious infringement of some sort. Which obviously, you guys know me. That is absolutely ridiculous and completely laughable that anybody would attempt. It's not. It's. It's actually pretty practical that somebody who's very heavily into the Mormon religion would attempt to use religious freedoms as a way to hurt or harm someone as a defense of, well, it's in my home, I can raise my kids however I see fit. But again, there's a, there's a, a line in the sand, right? You have to decide at what point is this no longer just being a form of parenting, but actually a form of child abuse, uh, which this is just is plain and simple. There's no getting around that fact. It is that. And if anybody, anyone watching this video thinks that this is justified, this type of treatment is justified in any sort of religious backing, then please do not watch me. I don't want you watching me. You're a terrible person too. I just can't believe that 
we've come to this point where people will, can use religion as a defense for things that would be morally corrupt, illegal, and downright traumatizing for a kid for the rest of their life. Like you have to understand that what these kids have endured these over these years, this is going to stick with them for the rest of their life. Their social, their social anxiety, their social ineptness due to not being able to allow to have friends. This form of punishing a child to uh, and not giving them food. Like there's ways to punish a kid, right? You know, my my parents took away my N64, right? They took away my my Pokemon games. They took things that I valued and I loved and I, I loved doing, and that was a great form of punishment. But to not feed a kid, that's not punishment. That is a form of sadistic child abuse, plain and simple. And quite frankly, everybody needs to be talking about this and more publicity needs to know about this situation. So I'll be updating you guys accordingly on the Ruby Frank case. Until next time, thank you for watching this video. See you guys next week.